Hello everyone, welcome to another video. We start this one off by looking at that lorry there that's about to turn left. Now because I know this road quite well, I know that it's turning right into a no entry up there. Now I don't know why it just didn't turn right at these lights here, but it's reversing back out now on a bend on a main road. Now, but when we get a little bit closer to it, I can see that someone's covered up the no entry signs with plastic bags. Now, to me, that doesn't look officially done. It just looks like someone's just gone and just put black bin bags over the signs. So how do you stand with the law on that sort of thing? Obviously, reversing out into the road is bad, but what about the rest of it? Let us know in the comments down below. In this clip here, there's a van coming towards us that's casually just going for a red light. He gets bibbed. This guy here, there's a car to its left-hand side in a minute that bibs him. Just to give him a little reminder, but he just carries on going. As you can see, he's got a red light there. Straight through it. In this clip, I do lose my temper a little bit, and in hindsight, I should have used the horn. I didn't use it at all. But when someone's overtaking someone's overtaking, it's bloody dangerous. All right, we can't overtake, no, so because you're overtaking. That, mate, cunt. And as I gave him the finger there, that is where I should have used the horn. Now this is quite a long clip, there's quite a few bad drivers in this clip. We've got a Kia in front of me, he's one of them. He hasn't done nothing wrong yet. But you see up in front, there's a car turning right. So why would you get behind it if it's turning right? You're, 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 you've got nowhere to go, it's blocked by someone turning right. Now when we go to the rear camera in a minute, you'll see that people don't get it, still don't get this thing. So we go to the rear camera now. The BMW was a little bit slow to see it, but it did see it. But the car behind him, the disgusting color car, overtakes it to wait there. I mean, what is wrong with you? Have you got a little tiny brain? Little tiny mind in that car that's behind the steering wheel to actually do something like that. So we come up here, we all want to turn right, two lanes go right, but that disgusting colour car has to be in front, so it goes there. So if we go to the front and back a little bit, the Kia has to also be in front, so it cuts across and has to be in front. Maybe it didn't realise that two lanes turn right. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt at the moment. There's the disgusting car next to me. At least it's indicating. I'm fast forwarding it. So as we come around the corner, no surprise that the uh, Kia is lane hogging and the disgusting color car has to be in front so undertakes it. Still fast forward in it. The disgusting colour car has gone. The Kia will not move over for this BMW. Just stays in the outside lane. So the BMW is kind of forced to do what he's doing now and gonna undertake it. Doesn't do it particularly fast, but he does do it. So now we've got another little BMW coming up behind it and followed by a tit in a Tesla. Who also wants to undertake everything in sight. Realises it can't do it, but pulls out, pulls back out rather, into a gap that really isn't there. Putting your hazards on isn't good enough for that sort of shit driving for me anyway. And moving on, 
we just go to the red light up here that they just decide to go through as well. So now we're on the A3. I'm not lane hogging because the lane to my right is a slip road going off to the M25. And the car directly behind me, the professional driver, also wants that slip road. So why is he going out that way when he wants the other lane? Because he's a professional driver. Weird, there's the gap, there's a big enough gap there, but when you look at the front, there's no gaps for him to get in that side. He's lucky that that van moved out, but still the gap ain't big enough because there's a Tesla in his way. I mean, he's very lucky that there was a little gap for him to get into, force his way into there. Why he couldn't come in behind me, two cars back, I do not know. We're still on the A3 slip road leading on to the M25 but coming from the different direction. We're looking at this guy here who hasn't got a clue of how merge and turns work. As we're coming onto the M25 slip road here, it goes into one lane because of road works. Now the Fiat in front of me has let that car in in front of him. Now the Mini should be coming in front of me, right here. Now this car here has even seen it and has backed off. It's backing off now to let the Mini in that gap and that car is gonna come in behind me. But the only person that can't see it is the Mini. So the Fiat has to let in two. I don't let it any because of the Mini, that's the Mini spot. But it's the Mini that's got the bad attitude. See the hand waving? And he's the one that's the idiot. He's the one with the tiny brain. Now as we come on to the M25 in a minute, the Fiat does something a bit, bit stupid though as well. This slip road does become actually part of the M25, so there's no need to pull out in front of that car. Could have just stayed where it was. So he's made that car slow down, realizes its mistake though, to be fair, and moves back in. So after it does move back in, we're concentrating on this Fiat now. This, this Fiat 500, always a Fiat. No, that's not right, is it? Um, well, we're concentrating on that Fiat now. Now it's a 50 mile an hour speed limit at the moment because of the roadworks and it soon becomes 70, just a little bit further down the road. And as you can see, because it's 50 and there's roadworks, it's quite bunched up already, the traffic. And when it gets to the 70 miles an hour bit, this is where this car lets itself down big time. We've got the national speed limit, and now we all start speeding up to 70 miles an hour, except for that Fiat, who's in lane three. He's doing about 45 miles an hour. Now, there's only one lane that can really overtake it. Everything else, I can't move out because I've got that car there and the outside lane is quite busy. So it's forcing me forcing me is probably the wrong word but to undertake it and as I undertake it it's a quite an elderly gentleman in there and he's clutching that steering wheel shitting himself he looks scared out of his mind as he's driving down the road it's sort of like so why are you in lane three if you're scared of motorways it's so bizarre what our people drive now we're going to go to the rear view camera in a minute and you'll see what the damage he's causing by staying out there. So I go past him here, a grown man in a girl's car, and it didn't register that I've undertook it. There was no message, it didn't receive any message to its tiny little brain that I'm in the wrong lane, someone's undertaking me, so I've got to be in the wrong lane. The van undertakes it, again, 
it sees no message, no intention of moving over. It's in lane three on the M25, doing now about 50 miles an hour, because I'm not speeding and I'm leaving it way behind. And it doesn't move over. I lose sight of it, and I've never done, I didn't see it move over. In the last couple of videos I've done, people have been saying, where are the Audis? We haven't heard you say it's always an Audi. That's because they've been acting like little ninjas. They've been hiding from me. Take this one. It's coming up on the outside lane, but it's hiding behind the van. So I couldn't see it. I can see it further down the road when it goes from lane four, right the way across to the slip road, all in one motion. But we've got Ninja Audis now. And as we speed it up here, it gets cut up himself by this car. I don't know what it's doing. It goes right across the lines and everything. And moving on to another Ninja Audi. You'll see it there over on the left hand side. But when it comes to the front where I'm looking, obviously I can't see it. It's hiding again. It's a bloody Ninja Audi. I can obviously see it go from that lane all the way over to the slip road again, all in one motion. So that's why there hasn't been an Audi on there. So I can say always an Audi because they're hiding. They're onto me. And as that Audi pulls in there, you'll see that black car pulling out of the slip road. Obviously hasn't had enough time to look at the road signs. Do people actually look at where they're going? I mean, before they jump in their car, look, it's braking. Do you, if you don't know where you're going, do you actually have a look at the map, look at Google Maps on the computer before leaving, so you've got some idea of where you're going? Do some research into it, or just wing it? and end up doing something like this, slowing down, braking, being in the wrong lane all the time because you don't know where you're going. Look, it's going to be braking in a minute, nothing in front of it because it don't know whether it's to want to take that slip road or not. Do some research, it's so much easier, so much less stressful. So still on the M25, just further down the road from that last idiot, I come across this idiot. He's slowing up for some reason. I've caught him up too fast for him to be doing that speed. So he's slowing up. Another one that doesn't know where he's going. Possibly there's a junction coming up. Is he looking, do I need it? Or is he on his phone? Yeah, he's on his phone. On the M25 doing about 55-ish miles an hour on his phone. Just a little one for you petrol heads coming up on the right hand side here. And some of you regulars on the uh, channel will know by that road sign, I am nowhere near where I normally drive. Yes, I went to North London, or North of London I should say, just for a change. I went somewhere different. And when you look into these old cars, you know, there's hardly anything in them. There's hardly any switches, knobs, or anything like that. Nowadays, there's buttons and switches for everything. I can turn my radio down in about three different places, and that's probably not a good thing, as it leads to distraction, doesn't it? As we see most of the time on the road, distraction causes bad driving. Does anyone remember Monty Python? the Minister of Silly Walks. Well, this lady coming from the right now, because she's crossing on a red man, I think that's a candidate for Minister of Silly Walks. Why not just wait for the green man and walk properly? And look at him. He must be cold. He's got his earmuffs on. And he goes through the red light. But seriously, I don't know why they're allowed to wear headphones. There should be some sort of rule that they're not allowed to wear headphones. If you can't hear something coming behind you, all right, I'd drive an electric car so they wouldn't be able to hear me anyway. But it's part of driving or riding, and it? Being able to hear what's behind you or in front of you. 
And as I come here, this is a 20 mile an hour road. I'm doing 20 miles an hour. I can see parked cars up in front, so there's no point in me moving over to the left. I know I'm not overtaking anything, but I will be moving out. But that's not good enough for a BMW. They have to be in front. As I've said, I'm in North London, coming through Central London, really, which I don't normally go to because uh, I don't like the driving, basically, or the riding in this case. You'll see a cyclist coming from just by that cab there on straight in front of us. That's going through a red light. No, it's no hesitation whatsoever. The one on the left now coming through, that's going through a red light too. No hesitation. And that is London now. That's why I don't go central London. And this is literally around the corner from where I just was. You'll see a cyclist go through the red light on the left there. Just no deterrent. There is absolutely no deterrent in London for these bikes to do to not do this. Anybody, look at the lights. We're in Sloan Square at the moment. Now I'm not so sure they were on the crossing properly enough for the, to get the ump with the Tesla there. I don't know. It was very close. Now we're in Battersea. You see a load of bikes go past me. Nothing wrong in what they're doing. But we're looking at that car reversing out. Look what it does here. We're at temporary lights here. You can hear all the bibbing, but how dangerous was that? Look where all the bikes are there. Doing nothing wrong, by the way. But look at the little gap that he had to get through with all them bikes in the way. How dangerous was that? What an arsehole that was. And if it was easier to report them, I would report that one. Now we're in Tootin. See the cycle lane over there? To the left? No, neither is that cyclist. Or that one. Or that one. Funny that, eh? Or that one. So what they do here, they make the cycle lane. The cyclists don't use it. Over to the right-hand side, they put them poles up to make a cycle lane over the other side of the road, which narrows the road. Now behind me, not too far away, is St George's uh, Hospital. Ambulances come down this road constantly, and they can't get down it because our stupid mayor, Sadiq Khan, has made all the roads like this. Not only is it always traffic like this, you can't move out of the way. And why? Because they put cyclists there. Look at what's using it. A motorbike is using it. The cyclists don't use it. The motorbikes use it. Or should I say scooters? Motorbikes get the ump of me when I call them motorbikes. But it's, you'll see it better from the, the rear camera, actually. The, how much space they're taking away from cars or vehicles, I should say off the road for cyclists that don't use the cycle path and I know they don't have to and all that sort of stuff I know they don't have to but it's no good for ambulances down this road just up there to the left hand side is St George's Hospital as I say the ambulances come down here all the time and they can't come down here right so let's try and look at this logically okay yeah I know me trying to look at something logically without trying to get into too much of a rant We've got a bus stop right there, okay? A stupid place to put a bus stop. Why? I'll tell you why, because there's a bike lane right there. It don't make no sense. The only time that that bike lane will be used is if there's a bus at the bus stop there because they won't be able to get round it. And that is the time when pedestrians want to get onto the bus. So you can see what's gonna happen, can't you? If you can't see what's going to happen, then you might have been the one that actually designed this road. There's going to be a bang and kaboof there, isn't there? Now, the ambulance that you want to come and sort this out, it won't be there. Oh, no, it will be all the way back there because it can't get down the road because you've made bike lanes on both sides of the road, which they don't use, by the way, which I know they're allowed to. But can you see the point I'm trying to make here? It's stupid. 
Now I haven't quite finished my rant yet. So we're coming up to a bus stop on the opposite side of the road, exactly how it is what we just passed. So you try telling me how an ambulance is supposed to get around that. It just can't. It just, it is no way of doing it. Well done for this cyclist for using the bike lane there. Well done that man. Makes a nice change to see him in it. Now, but having seen that, if we look over to the left now, with all that made for them, they still ride on the pavement. Now, if you think I'm blowing this all out of proportion and pedestrians will be looking for cyclists, have a look at this pedestrian crossing on a green light. Look at the look that she just about looks a little bit there. But if the cyclist is in that cycle lane, no chance. You put a bus stop in the scenario and you got just what I've just tried to explain back there. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one. Bye.